you're strapped in with record-breaking unlimited class champion driver Nobuhiro Tajima of Japan. He's won the annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb every year since 2007 and is this year's returning champion. He's just started his run and wow, we're already going over 100 miles per hour uphill. Yes, Tajima's determined to do it again. He wants to conquer this mother of all mountains and break his own record of 10 minutes in one second. Will this be the time? Monster Tajima, starting his career in 1988 here on Pike Peak. Will he have the 10 minute barrier? Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Coming to you direct from the world famous Pikes Peak Mountain, just outside of gorgeous Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is the race known as one of, if not the most extreme and dangerous motorsports competitions in the entire world. While competitors must wrestle their vehicles up a 12 mile mountain course, attempting to beat the clock, they are also challenged with the effects of high altitudes and the narrow roads. Reese Mill now accelerating up the fourth leg and into Devil's Playground. The ins and outs of 156 turns, along with few guardrails, pose another challenge to our drivers. But stop. There's another even more significant element that challenges every competitor at every Pikes Peak race at every turn. Mother Nature. Take all that, then factor in the potential problems of possible wind, rain, fog, sun glare, hot and cold temperatures, sleet, and even snow. And then you'll have an idea of why the Pikes Peak Hill Climb is one of the most harrowing and dangerous competitions in the entire world. Stay tuned, because we'll be taking a hard look at the competitors, their cars and motorcycles, and we'll follow the most exciting and record-breaking runs. In short, you'll discover the who, what, why, when, and hows of this year's annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. miss a minute of this one-of-a-kind, high-speed, action-packed event. The 89th running of the Race to the Clouds.
Before we get back to racing, we thought you ought to know something about this historic event. First held in 1916 and known as the Race to the Clouds, the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb is the second oldest auto sports race in the nation, just behind the Indianapolis 500. The race was started by one of Colorado Springs' most outstanding citizens and businessmen, Spencer Penrose. His vision for a road up Pikes Peak for tourists paid off when he promoted the first race up the mountain as a publicity stunt to attract visitors to the area. It was the world's highest highway, a toll road to the summit open to anyone with $2.50. Penrose's race worked. Thousands of people came from across the country to see this spectacular event of sheer daring. That first race was so popular that it's been run every year since, except during the years of World War I and II. In the old days, there were only two or three classifications for the types of cars and motorcycles entered in the race. But these days, there are several types and styles of vehicles from purpose-built unlimited cars to electric motorcycles. But before we get into those various classifications, let's take a quick look at what a hill climb car is all about. Here's a typical purpose-built vehicle for the hill climb. This racer has a tube frame chassis which incorporates a full roll cage. It has downforce front and rear wings for increased traction and the car is powered by a V8 engine. The suspension has been extremely beefed up as has the braking system with drilled rotors and oversized calipers. Additionally, the vehicle also has all the required onboard safety equipment. Another common vehicle that would compete in the hill climb would be something like this Subaru. While the car is mostly stock, it is tuned for rally and hill climb events. It features a turbocharged, two-liter, four-cylinder engine. It also has improved suspension and braking systems, plus the safety and fire equipment. The primary overall concern for all competitors and their vehicles is that of safety. All cars must pass a safety technical inspection before being allowed on the mountain, even for practice runs. Basically, the cars must have roll cages or roll bars, shoulder and lap harnesses, fire systems and fuel shutoff switches. Drivers must wear Nomex fire retardant suits, gloves, shoes and a regulation crash helmet. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Safety first. Let's now take a quick look at the various classifications for the Pikes Peak event. First and foremost is the Unlimited class. It's the class more closely watched than any other. It's a no holds barred classification. There are no restrictions, nor are there any specifications for this class. Anything goes except for safety. These purpose-built racers are the most exotic and fastest cars competing for the overall time and king of the mountain. Here are some more classes here at Pikes Peak. In just a moment, we'll meet some of this year's competitors, including some father and son teams. Plus, don't miss what several competitors had to say about what makes this race so difficult. Stick around, we'll be right back with more right after this.
We're back with Tajima on his run up the mountain. As you know, he's out to break the event's record, the one he himself set in 2007. He's driving a 910 horsepower, one of a kind Suzuki Go Pro Special, hoping to again make history in the unlimited class. He's really been running very smooth and very fast, so his run should be a good one. We'll check back on Tajima shortly, but let's first meet his competition. Meet Reese Millen, back again with his rework for 2011 Honda Genesis PM580, in which he finished third place last year. Millen has competed in various classes for the past 18 years, and now, more than ever, wants to crack that 10-minute barrier in the unlimited class. Turning in very fast practice times, Millen's 750 horsepower coupe definitely is a contender. This is Dave Carpation, a 24-year-old Texan and rally car driver extraordinaire. He's won the Pikes Peak Open class three years in a row and now has moved up to the Unlimited class. Dave runs a totally modified Mitsubishi Evolution 959, especially built for this year's run up the mountain. Another newbie to the Unlimited class is French driver Jean-Philippe Desroux. A champion rally driver in Europe and known for his ice road racing expertise, Desroux drives a Dacia Duster built by a racing arm of Renault. This particular car is a one-of-a-kind, 850 horsepower, prototype rally-style car tuned for high speed and high altitudes. Ever a contender, Paul Dahlenbach returns this year with one of the most competitive cars yet. It's a purpose-built, totally tricked-out behemoth that cranks out 1,300 horsepower. Again, very fast practice times makes this car definitely one to watch on race day. So, these are the top drivers and cars we'll be following in the Unlimited class to see if the ever-elusive 10-minute record gets broken. Meanwhile, competitors to watch in other classifications might include several father and son teams. One of those is that of Randy and Lane Schrantz. Both are longtime Pikes Peak racers and have won several events. Schrantz races a special propane-powered Shell Valley Cobra in the Pikes Peak Open class. However, this year was special. Yeah, today my dad, Randy Schrantz, breaks Louis Unzer's record of 36 times racing up Pikes Peak. Today he'll roll up to the start line for the 37th time, which is absolutely amazing. He's been uh, racing this race basically since I was born, and so I'm a proud son today. Uh, 37, just one more, but I think we're going to at least go for a couple more. It's just about like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. It's just another one of those uh, deals we celebrate together. Another team that's been on the mountain for several years is Rod and Reese Millen. Both class championships, Reese the son has six titles to his name and Rod the father has won eight class championships. In fact, during the 1990s, Rod took the unlimited class five times and set the official hill climb record. His time of 10 minutes and four seconds, which he set in 1994, stood until 2007 when Tajima turned in the current record run of 10 minutes and one second. As we know, his son Reese is attempting to break Tajima's record, but Father Rob will run in the time attack class in a reworked Hyundai Genesis Coupe borrowed from his son. Today's event will be his first time back on the mountain since the last time he competed here 11 years ago. It's role reversal. You know, Reese, Reese would drive some of my old cars here the first few years, and now I'm driving his old cars. You know, so it's very special, very unique that we can do these sorts of things. We'll be right back with more action right after this.
we're back on board with Tajma. He's about halfway up the mountain, and so far he hasn't made any mistakes. He's running very, very fast. The car seems to be doing quite well, and the engine hasn't missed a beat. But here's the best part. The weather's been cooperating also. So if everything holds together, this just might be a record run. You can bet Tajma and everyone else is hoping, maybe even praying that today, they can elude the many dangers that can face competitors during any given run. The mountain is totally unique. Even if you were to say you practice during the week, race day feels different. So it is a, it is a living organism that moves and changes shape and weather affects it hugely. So all of that it makes it a bit of a moving target. The entire race, the week, the race day, the preparations, prior experience really make this race one of the biggest challenges in the world. You don't see very many rookies come up here and win or, or even do that well uh, because, yeah, you can play it on a video game all you want, but once you get up here, the, the, the consequences are pretty, pretty high if you make a mistake. The returning 2010 two-wheel time attack rookie of the year, Savannah Rickley. She is excited this year about the new additions on the course and to her mini. This is a 2003 Mini Cooper S. We've stripped the interior and put a WRC spec roll cage in it. We've done a lot to the suspension, the brakes. We're running federal tires this year. We've put pulleys on the engine to add a bit more horsepower as well as some tuning. And we have a lot of Group 4 aerodynamic parts that really help the car stay planted. Um, this year we definitely have changed. Last year we ran a wet tire and this year we're running a semi-slick. So we're compromising a little bit on the dirt, but we definitely have seen the advantage on the asphalt through testing. The shape of the road has changed quite a bit. Some of the corners aren't nearly as wide, so a few you can't carry as much speed through the exit, but it's really fast. I'm anxious to see how everyone else's times come through, but we are feeling fast. We hit, I think, 95 miles going into bottomless pit through testing, and last year we didn't even see 90, so it's fast. Finishing with a quicker time than last year, Savannah makes it to the summit as the first to go up Pikes Peak twice before the age of 18. The car's a champ, the tires are great, and I think me and Rebecca worked very well together, so we saw that checkered flag. The growing interest in electric vehicles has expanded into the fields here at Pikes Peak. They are a Kuo Hanawa in the Exhibition Car Class and Chip Yates in the Exhibition Power Sport Class. Mr. Hanawa has returned for his second year with new improvements to his car. For Chip Yates, this is his rookie year to Pikes Peak, riding in his world-known electric racing superbike. If you have noticed, there is no sound coming from the electric vehicles. In fact, to help that situation, the Japanese electric entry has a continuous electronic chirper to let folks know that the car is coming up the hill. We need to mention there are several women competitors that compete in the hill climb. The race is open to all qualifiers, and in fact, this year, very serious female racers have thrown down the gauntlet to the male drivers in various classes. Exhibition Power Sports has one new unique driver this year. He has brought his college school project to a test on the mountain. It's a Kawasaki motorcycle converted with his own three-wheel leaning design. Hey, so my name is Eddie Smith. I'm with Tremoto out of uh, Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, we designed the leaning three-wheel vehicle suspension system at the University of Mississippi for our mechanical engineering senior design project. Uh, we found out that Pikes Peak is the only place that we could uh, take our creation to race it, so uh, here we are racing Exhibition Power Sports. So the bike is based off of a Kawasaki Z1000, which is a four-cylinder 1000cc motorcycle. And then our conversion is the leaning vehicle suspension system, which is two front wheels um, that lean, so it steer balances like a motorcycle, uh, but it just gives you extra traction and stability and uh, hopefully better braking performance uh, that will help us out here on the mountain. 
what we're trying to do with the with the Tremoto system is uh, just kind of uh, prove out the technology a little bit. Uh, so we'd like to do custom retrofits or possibly partner with a bigger manufacturer um, to build uh, vehicles like this for the general public to buy. In just a minute, we'll explore further why the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb has the reputation for being one of motorsports' most crazy and dangerous world-class racing events. But first, these messages. We thought you might like to hear some more of what competitors had to say about what makes the Pikes Peak Hill Climb so unique and just plain dangerous. The challenges of race day is weather. Because you're running later in the day at this time of year in Colorado, afternoon showers always happen and within minutes, not hours, minutes, you can have weather go from 95 degrees to snow. It looks like it all may, may happen this year with a, with a 10 minute record will fall. Of course, anything can happen uh, race day with the weather, uh, but right now it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Jeff Zwart, a 12-time competitor to Pikes Peak, has returned to hold on to his current record in the two-wheel time attack class. Well, this year I'm running in time attack and uh, in the two-wheel drive division, and we decided to run a car this year that is basically a street car. Uh, we prepared it in California, Porsche Motorsport prepared it, and they put in the roll cage, the seat, the fire system, all the things that you need for safety, but we left in the GPS, the air conditioning, the radio, all those things, so uh, the car's got all the creature comforts, but it's a full-blown race car now in terms of safety. In the Porsche this year, we're running a 3.6 liter twin turbo, six cylinder motor, and it's exactly as the factory delivers it uh, to the customer. So uh, we did not do any modifications in the engine side of things. We did uh, take care of all the safety things that are required by the race. because of Rod Millen. I was, uh, Rod was my, uh, did a lot of driving for me and my business and then uh, ultimately he said, oh, you really like driving, we should build you a rally car. So he built me a rally car and we went off rallying in the same year as Rod was rallying. And so that led to doing the Pro Rally Championship all over the United States and then ultimately we ran the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. And 
When I ran the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, I said, oh, this is the greatest road on earth. I want to do this every year. So that's how it went. In terms of competition here, you're always racing against the mountain. You can never lose sight of that. But this year, there came a surprise to me uh, late in the game in that uh, my very good friend, Rod Millen, decided to enter into my class. And so I was uh, faced with uh, suddenly running against arguably the greatest living driver of the modern era at Pikes Peak with the best of the drifting cars available to him. So he's uh, running a Hyundai and, uh, and it's a full drift car, a full race car. And uh, we've got to run against him this year. The part that makes Pikes Peak difficult is that on this Sunday, you get one run, one shot at it. And you have to pretty much so run a near perfect run. This year, the depth in the classes is so large where you've got almost triple the uh, competitors in each class as we did just last year. So that if you make a mistake, there's gonna be somebody right in there to fill it in. And I think that uh, that's the difficult part of the mountain is that business of you don't get another lap to try to make up for the first lap. You get one lap here, essentially 12 and a half miles, put it on the line, 156 turns, and you let it roll. Of course you're thinking, oh, where could I have gotten this or that? It just, hey, we drove the car here. It's a full-on street car. We're going after the, the, the strongest drift cars out there with the uh, greatest of drivers. And uh, to pull that off, I'm pretty happy. Back after 11 years, Rod Millen returns this year, partnered with his son's team. His goal is to put the Millen name back on top of the two-wheel time attack class. You know, I had mixed feelings um, and, and mixed thoughts about coming back, but it's turned out to be so much more fun than I really originally thought it was going to be. So, you know, sometimes when you, you take something away from somebody for 11 years like it's been for me, it's sort of fun to come back and sort of enjoy it, experience again, and to see all the folks in that, that, that you know, all our friends that we made throughout the, the many, many years we competed here. I first did it 30 years ago, so, um, and, but you know, I haven't done it for the last 11 years. So, you know, I've done it off and on th throughout the last 30 years, maybe 15 times. I've run in quite a few different classes. I bet you I've run in six or eight classes. But, you know, primarily, you know, I, I, I focused on the unlimited class and I ran in that, that class for, I think, seven years. time attack class um, and so so there I'm actually driving my son Reese's car um, in that class I grew up in New Zealand and um, my passion when I was a, a teenage kid was surfing and but I lived in an area of New Zealand it was only 20 miles from coast to coast and, and when the wind would change, of course, the swells and the, and, at the beach would change, and I'd zip across to the other coast. The great thing about that was it was all gravel farm roads from coast to coast. So after doing that for a couple of years, I, not only I enjoyed the, the surfing and that, but then I started to enjoy sliding the car around the gravel roads. And, and at age 17, I entered my first hill climb in New Zealand. And, and did a bunch of hill climbs. And during that period of time, I, I used to read about the Pikes Peak hill climb as the ultimate hill climb. So, you know, there was, there was a lot of water passed under the bridge from, from those days until I came here and competed at, at, at the Pikes Peak event. But, you know, there was, there was all the ways this magnet out there to, to, to sort of entice me to come and compete.
I'll be honest with you, I think it gets easier and easier um, just because of all the pavement. It takes a lot of the, the unknowns out, the unknowns of how much traction, how much grip you're going to get at any given corner. Um, the, the traction is, is very consistent. So um, it's not as difficult, I believe, as, as what it used to be. Having said that, you know, if you, if you add weather, then of course that becomes a challenge because it can be snowy and icy on some of the, the course. Rod crosses the finish line with a new record time for the two-wheel time attack class and putting the Millen name back on top. Uh, the Hyundai Genesis ran just great. You know, there wasn't any issues at all. When we return, we will talk with Bob Gillis on what is high priority when it comes to this long-running event. The new additional pavement to the course does make the possibility for a new overall record this year, but some drivers still like the dirt. I've actually savored every corner on the dirt segment of the track. I wish this mountain was still dirt. It's a whole lot more fun to drive it sideways than it is straight, but uh, it is what it is, and we're going to keep racing it even when it's all paved. Top portion of, of the course from 16 mile to the, the, the summit there, that was always difficult, especially when it was a gravel road, but it's paved now. So it should be a bit of a walk in the park compared to what it used to be. We all hated to see the dirt go. And I think when it's all paved, you're gonna see, you know, maybe even an Indy car or, or a Formula One car or whatever uh, to come up here and try to conquer this mountain. All signs point to that the record will be broken. Uh, the additional pavement on the upper section has to be easily good for 15, 20 seconds. It, it's closed the gap. It's closed the whole field up. So you're not going to see a big gap between the, the fastest guy and the slowest guy as you have in the past. We have to wait for that road to come to us, to the competitors for race day to really make that elusive 10 minute barrier something that can be broken. Bob Gillis, chairman of the Pikes Peak Board, tells us about the organization behind this famous race. 
the Pikes Peak Hill Climb is a nonprofit organization. We're a, a nonprofit board. We're all volunteers. Obviously, our main thrust of things, even though we're trying to preserve the legacy, is to conduct the annual event and promote the city of Colorado Springs. So now we have 2.6 miles left of dirt and approximately 10 miles left of, of asphalt. We think that most of that will be done for next year's race. There could be a portion of it that's still not paved. It costs about a million dollars a mile to pave, particularly at altitude. Mission in life is to promote the city of Colorado Springs, promote the legacy of Spencer Penrose, who 95 years ago started this event, and uh, that's what we do. With more than half of this year's field represented by motorcycles and quads, the overall fastest time was set by Carlin Dunn from California. Carlin rode a Ducati Multistrada 1200, setting a new overall motorcycle record with a time of 11 minutes and 11 seconds, also capturing Rookie of the Year. Stay tuned, we'll be right back here in Colorado with more of the 89th running of the Race to the Clouds. The Friday night before the hill climb in downtown Colorado Springs is known as Fan Fest. The festival that attracts over 35,000 race fans and gives them the chance to meet and greet hill climb drivers and see their cars up close. So, 
Let's get back to racing and check on how our other unlimited drivers are doing this year. This is Jean-Philippe Desroux, a rookie this year to the mountain, but not to European-style ice and rally car racing where he's a six-time French national champion. Jean-Philippe drives a Dacia that has been totally reworked for Pikes Peak. Beneath its fiberglass body are a number of sophisticated features, including an 850 horsepower, full-race 3.8-liter V6 Nissan engine, and a six-speed sequential gearbox, and all kinds of aerodynamic front and rear wings developed in a wind tunnel. For a first timer on the mountain, Deroot had a terrific run and actually placed third in the unlimited class. Look out for this competitor in future Pikes Peak hill climbs, because this guy's fast. And of course, Paul Dollenbach is back again with one of the most powerful cars ever run at the hill climb. The car itself is was really made for the harder surface, so the, the more they pave, the more it comes to my car. The engine that we have this year, it's, it's actually the same, same block, pretty much the same engine, but we added uh, two Banks turbos uh, to the car, and it bumped our horsepower up to three, uh, 1,307 uh, horsepower, which is definitely plenty horsepower, but we were very unsure of what was going to happen uh, when we came up here and, and before testing. Was it going to be too much? Was it going to break the car? Uh, were parts going to fail? And uh, so far, so good. The car's been running like a dream. Small block Chevy, 410 cubic inch. Transmission is out of a uh, 1996 Lola IndyCar. So it's a sequential gearbox. Definitely a grassroots team. Um, compared to everybody else, and um, we're, we're the we're the local guys trying to beat the world right now. Um, you got to remember, there's not a lot of air up there, so we're trying to capture as much as we can with the wings. Uh, they come in at about 35 miles an hour, so um, they're they're working most of the way up there. And there's been three times where I've had mechanical failures on, uh, during race day. We we've, we've had problems during the week. Um, you know, throughout the years, but race day, the car has always been reliable. All right, Paul's car is at the start line. He's off. Whoa, wait a minute. Oh no, something's gone wrong with his car. This just shows you how quickly one can be out of the game at Pikes Peak. Hopefully the race goes on for a long time and I hope I'm a part of it. However, never known as a quitter, Dahlenbach will definitely be back next year as a big threat. The new rookie kid in the Unlimited class, Texas Dave, has moved up from the Pikes Peak Open class. He has been rallying since 2005 and even has his own rally driving school in Austin, Texas. We've been racing the hill climb. This will be our seventh year. Um, like I said, we won open the past three, and I wanted to I wanted to move forward. I was trying to be in the uh, big fish in the little pond, so we'd like to be the little fish in the big pond this year. So we took our old open class car and cut a few hundred pounds out of it, uh, moved the radiator to the back seat, and uh, put a couple nitrous bottles in the back seat, actually. And uh, we're making good power. Unfortunately, we blew four head gaskets this week. I've only had about three miles of driving in the car. So it's kind of a complete unknown. This is, uh, this is definitely a, a trial by fire development year for us. It was a Mitsubishi Evolution 8. It's a 2003 model. Uh, we're calling it a, a Rally Ready Evolution 959 now, as our goal is to break 10 minutes. So we're going under the number 959. 
It's a 2.3 liter inline four. It's a cast iron block from the factory. It does close to 300 horsepower. And now we're pushing a little bit over 600. And uh, our goal for next year is to be closer to 1,000. company's called Rally Ready Motorsports, so we love gravel. So, you know, we're always sad to see it go, but it's been it's been a long time coming. We've worked really hard on the peak for years and years, trying to compromise our setup between the pavement and gravel. And um, I'm thrilled to be here for the last year of gravel. I'm thrilled to have been here when the when the W's were paved. I'm only 23, so for me to have been here for seven years is, is huge. And, uh, and uh, you know, I look forward to next year. It's going to be a brand new race, and it's going to be really interesting. So. Well, Dave had a good run going until he hit the halfway point. And yes, those mechanical problems he mentioned during his practice sessions returned, and unfortunately forced Dave out just past the Glen Cove area. So mechanical problems have struck down two of the five unlimited competitors. So far, no one has broken the elusive 10 minute record, leaving only Millen and Tajima chasing the record. Reese Millen has been chasing and nipping at Tajima's heel since last year now in the unlimited class. He returns to the mountain for the 19th time this year, and again, he's out to break the record. Millen has been running very, very well in today's event in his special built 2011 Hyundai Genesis PM580. For 2011, we're bringing back the same car that we ran last year. Effectively, the drivetrain, everything is the same. Uh, differential casings are the same, but the internal parts have been changed. Steering rack is the same, but the ratio has been changed. Tires are the same size, but the brand has been changed. All four unlimited cars were within one second today, which shows this week is going to be some tough competition for everyone in the class. My company, Reese Millen Racing, designed and built uh, our car, the Hyundai PM580. From the ground up, it's a tubular frame pro molly um, style platform. Uh, it's shot in a, a carbon fiber body, which we also do in-house. And then it's really designed around Hyundai's performance, Hyundai's power. And we utilize the production-based Hyundai Lambda 3.8 liter V6, which was stroked to 4.1 liters and turbocharged. Be confident that um, this year you're going to see two to three cars go sub 10. Uh, I'd like to be one of those cars. You know, if anyone really respects to, to break that record, it has to be Nobuhiro Tajima. But if anyone's going to knock him out of that position, I'm going to put forward the biggest challenge.
I moved to the U.S. at 17 to, to live with my father, um, and I visited him every year from five years to 17. I always knew what he did, but really didn't understand everything that was in detail. Uh, coming to the U.S. exposed that to me, and my passion grew from bikes to cars rapidly. And in a couple of years of crewing for him up here and various races around the world, um, led me into the driver's seat, and I never looked back. You know, the hardest thing about challenging Pikes Peak as a driver, as an engineer, as a team, is you really have to experience the race at least one, two, three times before you get everything right. You practice in the mornings with the road temperatures at 40 degrees, ambient air temperatures around 55, 60. Race conditions on race day are completely different. So if you set the car up, if your cooling temperatures and everything are fine during practice, race day the whole car can completely fall apart. When you decide to race Pikes Peak, um, obviously there's a, a physical side of it as you as a driver, but probably more importantly there's a mental side of it. You cannot let that mountain intimidate you. If it intimidates you, it will beat you. I do a lot of training for the race, uh, but we still run oxygen on race day. It's something that my father brought to the hill some 20 years ago. We run it in the car purely just as a way to calm the driver. You're working super hard up there. You know, accelerations, we're pulling, I think, over 1.1 Gs of acceleration and two Gs under braking. You know, that's gonna cause you to hold your breath for a second or two, and with the thin air, it's gonna take you four or five seconds to gain your breath. In the middle of the W's, halfway through, we lost the brakes literally in the top. I was downshifting with the gears to slow the car down. Easily gave up 15 seconds. Now we've got a couple of little details we need to attend to, and next year is gonna be wicked fast. Nobuhiro Tajima, known in rally and drift car racing circles as Monster, has been involved in international motorsports for the past 40 years. As a small boy in Japan, he always wanted to become a race car driver. And once he saw a photo taken at an early Pikes Peak Hill Climb event, he knew that he was destined for this race. The engine is a 3100cc Suzuki dual overhead cam Four valve V6 with twin turbochargers that produce 910 horsepower. His first time at Pikes Peak wasn't until 1988, and he's been racing every year since. Monster's nickname came about due to his erratic and wild driving technique that somehow always allowed him great control. In 1995, Monster Tajima won the hill climb's overall win for the first time. However, it wasn't until 2007 that Tajma not only won, but set a new record for the event with a 10 minute and one second finish. He went on to win again for the next five years, but never breaking that elusive 10 minute barrier. 
This year, the now 60-year-old monster, also known as King of the Mountain, is determined to break his own record. His car this year is basically a Suzuki SX4 Coupe. However, it's definitely not stock and is a purpose-built, one-of-a-kind monster in its own right. Fantastic, because the, you know, the car, tire, suspension, rim, everything goes well. And my driving also good, so... <laughs> very happy. I'm very happy. I am a Finnish, I am a Gondor, I am a Cardinal. <laughs> yes, Monster's done it. He's broken his own record and established himself as the first person ever to go under 10 minutes on Pikes Peak. Thank you for watching the 2011 Race to the Clouds. You've now seen the first ever sub 10 minute time up this famous and historic world class hill climb. We'll see you next year for the 90th anniversary of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb.